and welcome to the Lisa Mitchell Show. I am your host, Lisa Mitchell. I am the founder of Power Body Language and also the founder, uh, co-founder of Selflessly, a technology company helping to connect businesses to have greater social impact. Um, and this season of the show is all about how we can power our presence. And few women have done as much to help other women find their voice, and power their presence than my guest today, Melinda Garvey. So Melinda, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I love um, I love your story, and, and I know that there's so much more for me to learn from you, and I, I really want um, the audience today to learn from your experience and how you can create your space and use your voice and really have it an impact and wherever you are in your life right now. Um, and, and you, as, uh, as the founder and owner of multiple media formats, are giving women across all backgrounds and all stories a place to kind of share themselves um, and find their presence. So thank you, first of all, for just creating the spaces and the places that you have to let women really um, have a home and, and find their voice. I think that's so critical. Well, it, it has been an incredible joy and pleasure. And, you know, it's funny, um, whenever people will ask me how I got started, I think to myself, gosh, I really ought to have a better story. Like, okay, I was this, you know, crazy feminist and I, I've, I've always been, you know, out there marching, doing all this stuff. And then I decided to form a media company, but it, it's funny how things happen to you because it really, it really sort of found me. Um, and it found me because I had this background and publications and media and I happened to be in this crazy horrible job that I hated and honestly I was out with some girlfriends one night drinking way too much wine this is now um, about 17 years ago and one of my friends said hey I just got back from Des Moines Iowa and I'm like really we're going to talk about Des Moines Iowa <laughs> of all places um, you know when I'm sort of having this pity party and lamenting this horrible job I'm in trying to figure out what's next. And she said, there was this really cool magazine there called Des Moines Woman. And you know what? No one's talking about women in Austin. And this is, you know, back in 2002, the kind of the first tech boom that was happening. You know, Austin is sort of the second tech capital to Silicon Valley. And um, it was all just men, 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 men. And she said, you should do that. You should start a magazine, you know, that, and give women a voice. And I was like, I, I can tell you, I remember like it was yesterday. It was this lightning bolt of, yes, that's exactly what I should be doing. And I, I had no idea where it came from. It just, I was instantly passionate, excited about it. And, you know, knew that this, knew that this was the path, right? So um, anyway, it's a, it's kind of a strange um, beginning, I guess, but I dove right in and seven months later, I launched the first issue of Austin Woman Magazine, which is my first company, which still going strong at 16 years now. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, yes, we're just about to have our 16th anniversary, which is hard to believe. I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, and, you know, what started to happen to me is that you know, I was so passionate and loved what I was doing and loved what I was doing in Austin. And of course I could see the impact here of just giving women this platform and voice, like you talked about, letting those stories be told so that not only these women could have a platform for what they were doing, but, but more so, so that other women could see these incredible role models and could learn from them and could be inspired by them and feel like, wow, if, if she can do it and she lives up the street from me and who knew, I can do this, you know, I can, you know, it, it's, it's motivating. And I just, it was just, it's been, you know, it's been such an incredible joy. Well, when you fast forward, you know, to a few years ago and we've got a woman running for president and arguably the women's movement, you know, nationally and even internationally is starting to just really buzz and everything that's happening. And I just started doing a lot of research because there was so much negativity really as there is now about what's going on in the women's movement, you know, inequality of pay. I mean, we've heard of all the big ones, you know, with, for women, lack of access to capital, lack of access to continuing education and technology and networks. Number one, lack of access to relatable role models. If you can't see it, you can't mm. be it. When I heard that, it was, it was all over. I kind of, I did one of these like, uh-uh, no, <laughs> no, not on my watch because I was just like, that, that's just, that's frankly, that's just stupid. Uh, that, that word I tell my son not to use all the time, but I was like, no, that's stupid. 
There, I mean, it's the lack of access, not the lack of role models. There are so many, there are millions and millions and millions of women all around the world who are doing incredible things. But guess what? There's no platform. There's no, there's no place for them to share their voice, to be these incredible role models that they could be. And when you look at what's happening in the women's movement right now, you know, you see a lot of celebrities, right? Who, look, I love Oprah as much as the next person and Sheryl Sandberg and Marissa Mayer and Beyonce and all those people, they're, they're great. <laughs> and I think that they, they definitely have a place, they get people excited, but it's pretty hard to have that kind of direct line like, ooh, wait, I see what she did and now I could do that too. It's Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It seems, uh, it seems impossible or highly unlikely at best. That's right. Out of reach, you know? And so, um, and, and that's what I, I guess that, you know, you know, when you have those duh moments, like I've been doing this in Austin, Texas for, you know, but at that point, like 14, you know, 13 years to the point I started kind of gelling on this and I was like, well, hello, doesn't everybody have this? I mean, of course, you know, you, <laughs> you kind of don't realize. And I, I mean, I knew they didn't because I would travel around the country and talk to women and, they would almost get annoyed when I'd show them Austin Woman Magazine because they'd say, oh, there's nothing like that in my city. You know, how right. do I have a platform? How do I find, uh, you know, how do I find role models? So that's what I just decided. I, I really had to do something about this because I knew that I could. I knew this was all of this that I've been doing was really leading me to this bigger platform and to solve I mean, again, I'm not saying we're the silver bullet by any stretch of the imagination, but I truly believe that there, there is one thing that we can solve and it's a really, really important thing. And I think that it's about giving, if you just give the women the access to the role models and they can see them and every single day on, on the dot, we take four minutes and we give you a role model every single day and think about that. You know, what if millions of women the world over heard a story, a positive story about a relatable role model, what kind of conversations would we be having you know, about this women's movement? You know, yeah. would they change? You know, would women be asking for raises more? Would they feel more confident about speaking up and sharing their ideas about raising money about there, there's so, this confidence gap. So much of it is just that we just don't have something to put a plug in. I'm just trying to put a plug in all this great stuff that's, falling away because women don't have that, that support. Right. And I, I love that you've, you've created the, you know, the on the spot from on the dot woman and that you're doing this four minute flash. And, and I am very honored to have been, to been featured as well. And um, I, I think that there's this, there's this fear. Like when I'm talking to other professional women or, or women that are kind of in, in this career, the questioning of what am I even doing? What do I want to do? What do I want my, my day to look and feel like? There is this kind of void of, well, I think I know how I want to feel, but I don't know how that shows up in physical space. Like I don't know how I can pursue that. And it seems like such a gap. Like it seems like such a stretch right now to get from this job and, you know, I did, did almost 18 years in a traditional corporate environment. And, and at the end of it, I was very much in that, like, kind of soul sucking, purposeless, no, no impact having what the hell am I doing here, spending all this time, um, kind of headspace. And, and part of that was just an, an unsettled element of my, my soul and, and not having connected with my purpose like you did when, when you, that light bulb went off and you're like, yes, me. But part of it was just, I felt immobilized because I'm like, well, how? Like, how in the hell do you go from being stuck in something that you hate when it's your every day to, to that? Because I would see the role model, you know, like, like the, the famous people, right? Or the people that had reached this massive level of success. And I'm like, well, that's not for me. Right. And I love that what you're doing is showing that this type of purpose, this type of fulfillment is for everyone and your path can look completely different. That's right. And it's still valid, right? Because I think a, a lot of times, at least with the women that I work with and even in my own life, there's this idea of needing permission. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? We, yeah. need, we need to have permission to pursue it or we need to have evidence that helps us be brave. And, and what you do with all of your media is you give a truckload of evidence 
in every single way that helps people like me be brave in pursuing it. And I want to know, do you ever get, because, you know, kind of the, the problem that I have and, and, you know, I've put myself on, on social media uh, probation from time to time when my head gets uh, in, in a, in a bad place from a competitive or a comparison standpoint, right? Yep. I, I think one of the things you've really been able to balance is showcase, showcasing and spotlighting women without it being, feeling like a contest. Right. Right. Well, Can you tell me how you've achieved that? Cause that's, it's such a difficult space in this kind of comparison environment that we're in right now. Right. Well, I, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, I think that when you, I think there's a difference between, um, you know, a, a, what, what's kind of a social media post where you're really just highlighting all the fabulous things and where you're actually doing a profile about where you're showing her journey. And our, our expertise, which we've done to them is really about the good, bad, the otherwise, what, what, what does the journey look like? You know, and even in four minutes, you know, we, we have the, the time and we, we take care and kind of saying, it's not just like, oh, look at this person. They're doing this, this, and this right now. And you go, okay, and? How, you know, <laughs> good for them. <laughs> how, so, you know, where did they start? How, and so I think that just that origin of like, okay, you know, I was, I was here and then now or here. And guess what? I had this bump along the way or I was fired from this job or this or whatever that happens. And then they're here and sort of the why behind it, how they got there and why it's important to them and, you know, what happened in that journey. And I think that what I love about role models is you can have hundreds, thousands, you can have tons of role models. Uh, it's interesting what you said a minute ago about your path doesn't have to look like any of these people. And I think that, that though what, what happens with role models is that of course, you're not going to follow anybody's path exactly. But I think what you can do is you can take, you might, you might hear the stories of, of 10 different people and go, oh, wait, okay, when she did this, that's really important to my, and this, and you might pick a little piece and then all of a sudden you cobble together your own path. But it's because you've seen these different variations and little parts of it fit you. And I think that's the important thing about a role model is that, is that you're not looking for somebody who is like, okay, I'm a robot. I'm going to follow this exact thing. It's really about when you hear enough people's journeys, right. you're always going to find those relational points. And when those things hit, when you feel that gut where you're like, oh, wait a minute, you feel that? That's when you go, okay, that's point one. And you start to build your path. But Here's the thing. Part of the reason people ask me, they're like, you do this every day. Are you kidding me? And I, we made a very conscious decision to do it every day. Yeah. And it's, let me tell you, it's freaking hard. It's tedious. <laughs> yeah. I, I think you're crazy. <laughs> you know, exactly. I mean, sometimes I'm like, what? You know, and we're doing it. We, we committed to do it in four minutes, which right. believe it or not, is actually harder than doing longer form because Absolutely. you really have to impact. But the reason why I wanted to do it every day is because it has to be a habit. We have to choose as women to reset our mindset. We have to choose to feed this information. Just like if we want to be knowledgeable about what's going on in the world, we have to choose to watch the news, to read the news, whatever, wherever you're getting that source every day. You, you have to choose the same way you have to choose to be able to see this world of, of female um, advancement and success in abundance rather than scarcity. Mm. But the sad thing about the women's movement right now, although there's some really important things happening and I don't ever want to discount things like me too and times up and the inequality of pay and things like that. Those are that kind of negative end of the spectrum that are super important. And I totally get need, need working on, but we don't talk about anything else. <laughs> we need to talk about the positive too, because here's the thing. I believe the positive so, so, so far outweighs a lot of these negative things and that if we were to focus and really commit i guess maybe not focus but commit to to changing our mindset to positive i think all these other things on the other end of the spectrum would be would would start solving themselves because we would feel empowered we would yes. feel confident we would stand up and we would have a voice that's what solves the things at the negative end but we're not living anywhere so on the dot is committed to live on this positive and we are committed to, to women's success yeah. and, and actionable steps. 
Yeah. And that's why we do it every day. It's a habit. I love that. And that's, that's absolutely how you shift a collective paradigm, right? You get critical mass with enough people that are choosing, as you say, you know, choosing to reset the mindset every day. And I love that you said, you know, seeing it as an abundance versus a scarcity. And I think that's part of the reason when, when we were first introduced and um, had our very first conversation that came up right away. And I was like, okay, like this is, this is, this is a woman We're we are going to do some, some amazing things together because we both have that mindset and, um, and it's always abundant. It's never scarce. Right. And I, I love the idea of daily habits. I think it's so important. I personally struggle to maintain the positive habits, right? Like my bad habits are stuck like glue forever. That's right. My positive <laughs> habits, right? Damn, they're kind of elusive. Like, like I, I'll do, you know, I'll meditate every morning for 10 minutes and I feel great. And, and then I stop. And then I wonder why I feel stressed out by 11 o'clock in the morning. It's like, I let go of my healthy habits. So what have you personally had success with as far as helping you to create and really hang on to those, those really important daily habits of, of positivity and abundance? <laughs> well, it's kind of easy for me because I just decided, well, since I'm not disciplined enough to do it myself, I'll form a company. Right. I'm, I'll be forced because I'm pretty much forced, you know, every day. I mean, I record them. It's my voice. So, so it, it's, it's a forced habit, right? I mean, and I know that's, that sounds silly. Obviously, that's not why I'm, but, but in all truth, I am, I'm so lucky. I've always felt like that. I am really, I, I don't have that say, I don't have the same mindset only because I've been doing this for so long. I mean, this isn't just like, oh, I decided last week because the women's, I mean, I've been doing this for 16 years right. with, and seeing these incredible women. And I'll, I'll tell you the, the one thing I have to probably battle against the most is sometimes even from the, the magazine, when I'm reading people's stories, I'm like, oh my God, like, look at me. I mean, I have a freaking newsletter. Like, what am I, I mean, these women are doing incredible things. I mean, you know, I have to overcome me feeling like this because I'm hearing about people constantly you know, so, so if there's one thing I have to sort of overcome, but I, I get it. Like to me, when I heard that lack of access to relatable, I mean, I was just like, what? That's stupid. I, it was so <laughs> to me. Like we can fix this. Right. No problem. Because I, I, I knew. And, it, and I think that that's kind of the difference is that I'm just really lucky because I happen, I just am in the, I'm, I'm forced in this environment, whether I, whether I want to or not. And believe me, some days I'm like, whatever, but I got to keep going. And then always, like I can be in a terrible mood or, uh, 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 and then I'm recording in my closet, by the way, it's real fancy in there. Um, you know, I'm recording one of the scripts and I start getting choked up thinking, oh my gosh, you know, these women are doing amazing things. So, you know, I, I, I'm just one of the lucky ones and, and I just want to share that with everybody. I mean, on the dots free, you know, I, it's, this is, this is, I, I've built this for women and I just want to share what I've had access to for years and years and years, because I know the impact it's made on my confidence and my success and just my overall well-being, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you on one thing though, because right, you, you're the lucky one, right? You did yep. not, you did not luck into this. This is <laughs> right? like, I, I know what it takes to even do a small consistent media related project, let alone where there's other humans involved in capturing the story and, and really telling that in beautiful ways like you do. Like that is, it, it's gift, right? Like clearly there's, there's area of giftedness and, and things that are kind of supernatural um, enabling you, but it is blood, sweat, tears, cuss words, wine, <laughs> right? That's my audio, my audio person who's a dear friend, Terry. I'm always like, when I, when I mess up a script, I mean, I saw that, like, oh, God. You know, I'll, some expletive, um, I, you know, if I can't <laughs> pronounce a name or pronounce a word or I'll, I'll slur through something, I'm like, I haven't even had any wine yet. I mean, so it's hilarious because she, of course, cleans up all my audio and she's always like, okay, I mean, real, I mean, I always say, I'm really sorry, Terry. Okay, but I just have to like use the F bomb here. This is real. I mean, so I actually talk to her when I'm recording, you know. <laughs> She lives in, she lives in Omaha, you know, it's like not even, she doesn't even live here. And she's like, okay, the entertainment for the day is Melinda and her, you know, <laughs> daily drama through getting through these scripts. I um, love it though. And, and that's, you know, one of the other things that I think is so important is like, there's this, like, I am, I am I, not shocking to anyone who's ever listened to an episode. Like I am a total type A, right? 
Like I am a type A, I'm going to succeed. And I'm going to, and, and the thing I trip over is like the right way. Mm -hmm. Right. I have put myself in more boxes, self-imposed, like no one's, no one's given me these rules to follow, but I've created this set of arbitrary rules for me because if it doesn't come the way I want it to, then it's not right. And it doesn't count. Mm -hmm. People like me who are kind of stuck in that or, or have a tendency to self-impose these rules and, and maybe just not even take action because I can't do it in a way that feels perfect or right to me. Mm -hmm. what, what advice do you have? Because I know there's, I mean, you got to kind of throw this type A perfect right thing out the window when you're doing every single day. Oh, maybe, yeah. Because right? I'm sure there's days you're like, I don't even want to like, I don't want to brush my hair today, but I got to get up and show up and do this work. That's right. Well, uh, you know, it's interesting because my best friend, um, Beth Owens, she uses this quote to me all the time and it's the most powerful quote. And then I in turn use it for others all the time. And here it is. And I'm giving it to you now. Oh, all right, listeners. Okay, here Get it is. Get your notebooks out. <laughs> the enemy of great is perfection. I mean, it says it all. Like I, I don't even need to give any more advice. Because we all know it's true. The enemy of great is perfection. The enemy of great is perfection. How many, how many people listening or watching to this right now are like, amen? Like, <laughs> there, there it. So should I drop the mic? <laughs> We're done. We're done. <laughs> that's right. And I'll turn with that. Beth Owens, she's awesome. And that, that's, you know, but, but um, and look, she has to say that to me often. And it's like, you know, I, I think if, if, of course, we all want to strive for great and we should, you know what, because we're women and we're, you know, that, that's how we're going to take our path. We've got to be great. Yeah. Right. But we don't have to be perfect. Perfection, actually, it's, it's like, it's like if you're on a, a bell curve, great's right here at the top. I think perfection is actually, you're going down because perfection, it feels off. It doesn't feel right. I mean, people love, in fact, I, that, the one great thing about the onslaught of all this crazy social media and, and un, you know, not professionally produced everything is right. that it's, it's the real, it's the real stuff. And it's the oops, you know, email that you have to send to your entire database. when You screw up something and, but people go, Oh, and I mean, I, when I get those, I'm like, awesome. Right. And they can say, oops, so sorry, we goofed, whatever. I mean, and that's, and that's okay. Yeah. I think that, there, it, that actually makes me feel better about a company. Yeah. Then, then everything's perfect and shiny and you're like, okay, what's this? Make yeah. me feel more connected. There's a term that I use called shiny plastics. Mm -hmm. um, and I have, have you ever walked into a room where you're just like, maybe these people are fembots? <laughs> <laughs> and I and then that's when you feel like the biggest train wreck of your whole life is when everyone else appears to be you know so so the shiny plastics one of the one of the commitments that I try to keep is to show up real in every space I walk into and it's really hard when you feel like the exception and not the rule and right. and I love to your point that so many more people are just showing up right? They're just showing up in the rooms. You get to see the blooper reel. You get to see the imperfection. You get to, you know, and, and I love that what I've discovered through that is that the, the more brave that I've been to walk into these spaces and kind of my authentic presence is the incredible amount of grace that people will extend you that's when right. you show them that you're human. That's right. And do you know, I mean, I, that's a really important point because think about the time when I'm actually the happiest and feel the most fulfilled is when I'm giving, you know, when I'm giving a gift, giving grace, feeling that like that most for most people, that's your happy place. So if you look at it that way, it's like, think about you're, you're giving people a gift by allowing them to give you grace because it, it all, it, it's, Ooh. giving is, is incredible. So sorry, we had a, just a, a minor glitch there. So anybody a moment. Watching, a moment. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you know, gotta love the interweb. So there's, this is a, this is a real life situation. This is not a fancy, fancy produced showdown thing. So just deal with it. 
<laughs> give, us, give us some grace, right? There We're you giving go. you the opportunity to extend. There you go. We just wanted to make sure you had the opportunity to give us some grace. We're just <laughs> illustrating and putting into practice. So. Um, <laughs> no, I, that's what I, we are. <laughs> right. No, I, I love that. Giving people the opportunity to, to be fulfilled and to give and show grace. You know, that's actually not a, a great gift for them as well as it is to receive that grace on the other side. And I think that that's so important as, as we are encouraging women to to find their voice to use their voice to tell their story even the parts that aren't pretty and polished and and perfect um you know what what you do with with the magazine and and on the dot and on the spot and um if you had to just give give people at at any stage in any phase maybe two or three encouragements or techniques that they can use right now to start sharing their voice and telling their story. What, what advice, what actionable uh, tips do you want to leave the viewers with? Well, I think that um, I, I talk a lot about creating this ecosystem of women that are really helping and supporting one another. And there are definitely things that we can all do to participate in that ecosystem. And a lot of it, sure, is about, is about finding a place to you and a platform for your voice. But really what it's about is, is finding a place to help someone else have a voice. And here's why that's so important. Think about what an ecosystem is. I mean, you mostly hear about in nature where like animals are eating other animals, and that's the ecosystem. But this is, this is a more positive, pretty one. <laughs> but think about ecosystems are all it's circular, right? You think of them in circular. And maybe, and you're right here at the top, and then an ecosystem is that, then what's, what's happening? You're doing something for the next person, the next person. And then at the end of the day, what comes back? Where does it always end up? Right. So I really believe that if we quit worrying about self-help and what we can do for us and how we can get, a, you know, and we help others, mm. it all comes back around. But it's so much more powerful because think about this. As a woman, what would it feel like if you walked into a room, a boardroom, a PTA meeting, because those are scary, let me tell you, you know, whatever, um, any kind of event, and you looked around and you knew unequivocally that every other woman in that room had your back. What would that feel like? It'd be incredible. It'd keep me from sitting in my car so long in the parking lot, dreading the thought of going in. That's right. Well, what I normally do. Probably we, we put you out of business because you talk <laughs> about, you know, body language and how to come in confident and own the room and do all this powerful stuff. But we wouldn't need you anymore because we'd be, so, I mean, because it's so much what you're feeding off other people, right? Yeah. And yeah. so, and, and the thing is, is that that's what we have to create because men have had that. Men don't go in a room and go, oh boy, is this person, you know, judging me. Right. They're like, hey, dude, buddy, I got my posse here. There are other men here. They, and, and it's like they're instantly trying to figure out how they help each other and how they work together. And, you know, so it's, it's really interesting. I think that, that we just have to create this ecosystem. So my best advice is figure out who you can help. Who can you mentor? Who can you invest in? That. Who can help educate on something? Um, just do, I, I think it's just super important that we, that we pay it forward because it will come back in spades. Yeah, I love that. All right, so, so your challenge to those of you listening and watching this right now is when you're done listening or watching this, that you need to make, just start a list of likely suspects that you can be of benefit to. Who right. can you connect with one-on-one -on -one and, and start a mentoring or even just, even just having a great conversation over coffee can do so much to embolden somebody That's right. to take those next steps to find their voice. So your, your mission today is to find that person that you can help level up, that you can walk beside, that you can help them find their voice. And it doesn't have to be a, a long-term formal arrangement just who can you invest in today that's going to help them be brave and help them feel confident to share their voice yes i love that that's a big mission right because again it's kind of scary to put yourself out there okay. um but i i know that everyone you know you can you walk into the room as your most confident clued in selves if you've been listening to the show at any point you should have plenty of tips on how to do that um because that's what we're all about here uh melinda you are everywhere doing all the things, but I, I know that my audience is going to want to connect with you, want to start getting their, their four minute daily practice That's right. of abundance mindset and collecting positive evidence of other women that are doing this. 
what is the best way for people to plug into your community and help be part of that ecosystem? Well, um, in fact, we just launched our brand new website and, um, and really brand new platform. So four minutes with on the dot is our, um, our flagship, what we launched with, um, where we have a daily woman to watch and we have hundreds of them on our website in all different categories. So if you're looking to binge on women in tech, we got you covered. Um, whatever it is that, that you want to look at. We've also now expanded our platform and our content. You mentioned on the spot, which is our long form um, interview podcast um, where I interview some incredible women to watch like you. Um, and we do a long form podcast and really kind of dive in and, and, and go deep. Um, and we also have lots of other great articles now on the website and every day we're adding new content. We're, we're going to be um, adding a woman, Rhonda Vitere, who is, um, used to be um, the um, chief technology officer for Estee Lauder companies. Now she's with InThrive, the president of InThrive, and she's going to be doing Ask Rhonda. I mean, she's so about women's empowerment, just really top notch. And um, Stephanie Breedlove, who's the co-founder of Care.com HomePay, is going to be curating the very best of the best um, articles for women that women need to be reading out there. You know, gosh, I can't keep up with everything that's going on. And she's actually curating those and teeing them up and kind of giving you the Cliff's Notes version. So that's all coming online really soon. So you can sign up for all this. You just go to onthedotwoman.com. You can sign up for our daily newsletter. It gets delivered to your inbox at 6 a.m. on the dot. And it's literally awesome. four minutes. You can listen to it or you can read it. And you just press play and you every single day. And that's really what I would ask is two things. Number one, to make the commitment. You know, try, what do they say? 21 days to form a habit. So right. I ask, do it for 21 days. You don't like it after that, then get rid of it. But I, I think you'll find that you're hooked. And then, then all of a sudden you're going to need that. You're going to be like, ooh, ooh, who's, who's, who is it today? Who is it today? So, but you got to make it a habit. If you love it, share it with everyone you know. Oh, are we back? Oh, we're back. Hello. We're back. Yeah, I know. This is oh, fun. Okay. The universe is having some fun with us. But yeah, I will tell you as a, as a consumer of that daily email, right? Like I'm super lazy. I don't want to go look for stuff. If I have to go somewhere and find stuff. But the fact that you send it directly to my email, and it's something I, I really do look forward to it. And it's been fun too, because then I go and I go on LinkedIn and I connect with the featured woman and like, get just get this whole like my network has grown yep. just exponentially in such a short amount of time in all different fields people I may not ever run across at an event or um you know in another format but you are bringing these amazing women literally into my life into my inbox hand hand picked hand delivered best of the best um and I I personally have learned so much just from taking that that short amount of time on a daily basis to, to engage. So I, I would recommend, you know, anybody listening or viewing this, you need to get on that list. Do yourself the biggest favor ever start getting, uh, getting these emails. And you know what, this isn't just stuff that women can benefit from. I think for men that are interested in being allies and supporting women, um, and, and walking alongside and, and, and reaching back for women to pull up for opportunities, like, this is information for you too. So it's not just for the ladies, it's for the men that want to really be strong advocates and allies. Um, there's something to be, to be learned every day and for everyone. And uh, Melinda, thank you to you and your team. Um, I know that this is a labor of, of an intense labor of love. Um, and there's lots of ways you could be using your talent and treasure and you've chosen to do it by shining a spotlight on amazing women and, and giving them a voice um, and helping them have a more powerful presence and, in any space that they walk into. So um, I, I want to thank you for myself for what you've done to, to educate and inspire and, and provide positive evidence of abundance to me every day. Um, and I know that you're doing that for, for hundreds of thousands of people every day. So thank you for, for sharing your gift with all of us. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And she, and, and Melinda has an amazing live event um, coming together soon that I, I'm so looking forward to being part of. I'm not sure when this episode is going to air yet, but we'll have either the pre or the post information up um, 
uh, through my social media and also at powerbodylanguage.com. And Melinda will keep you updated too when you subscribe to the daily newsletter. So um, all of this will be in show notes too, so you can reference that. Um, but in the meantime, this has been another episode of the Lisa Mitchell Show. You can always find me on social media. You can't get away from me at this point. It's at Lisa Mitchell Indy. And you can connect with me at powerbodylanguage.com anytime you need to. So have fun walking into your places and spaces as more confident, powerful presence uh, people today. 